Benny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the unbeaten Norfolk nightmare, Tommy Fletcher. Tommy, how are you? I'm very good, Danny, mate. How are you? I'm good. I was just marvelling at the absolute size of your feet. <laughs> like, what size are they? How hard is it to find trainers as well? Yeah, no, size 13s, but <laughs> yeah, they are hard to find uh, trainers. Normally my boots are 14, so it's hard to get them, isn't it? It's hard to get them. <laughs> good stuff. Well, I'm assuming you can find boxing gloves a bit more easier than that. Um, training hard at the Mark Tibbs gym. You're back out on the Parker Rider. Bill, 26th of November. How excited are you? They've kept you busy since you turned over. Yeah, I'm buzzing really. I think I've had a uh, I've had a good run at it so far. Like my first fight, um, box at Wembley, and then Manchester Arena. Now straight back out. Really, it's not been long since my last fight. Straight back out on a good card at the O2 Arena. So I've had a good, very good run at it. So as long as I keep putting them over, smashing them, I'm sure I'll keep boxing, stay active. How much of what you show in the gym have we seen so far in those two pro fights? Ah, oh, one percent really, not nothing. Like I'm in there, I'm schooling these boys. You know what I mean? So, but um, as I as I learn in my fights and that, and get more relaxed, get behind the jab, you'll start seeing more of what Tommy Fletcher is about. But like I said, I'm only 20 years old. I'm still learning, so I'm sure as fights progress and my opposition increases, I'll uh, you'll see the best version of me. But I'm still learning. I'm still learning. And at the Origins Gym in Rainham, what are the main kind of things you've been working on? What have you seen develop in yourself from the amateurs to where you are now? I've got a lot more robust, you know, like I can get in there, I can weather the storm a bit, if you know what I'm saying. Like I can, uh, instead of getting in there, I'm keeping them long and in the amateurs trying to score points and that, although I'm still known as a um, strong fighter, but now I'm getting stuck in, you know what I mean? Hold my feet, whipping them in, cracking them in. But uh, yeah, Mark's teaching me the ways, really. He's teaching me of uh, how to be a professional, you know. Has any one of your gym mates kind of particularly took you under their wing or, or all of them? Because you're obviously one of the youngest there, if not the youngest. No, we're all pals in there. I think we're all, um, we're all working towards the same goals. You know what I mean, everyone's in there working towards fight dates and everyone wants to earn the most money and be the best they can. So we're all in there together working. So I guess we're all a team in there. Now at this stage, you might be getting more of a challenge in sparring than you are in the competitive fights. Who have you been kind of moving around with? Who have you been learning from in that respect? I've been sparring Johnny Fisher, um, John Edges, Chris, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but um, yeah, I've been sparring. He's a good amateur. I've sparred loads of people. Um, for my last camp, I sparred Chevron Clark for oh. every week, so he's a good, credible boxer. We had some great spars, and um, I got him ready just as much as he got me ready. So yeah, like the sparring's always there, and it is, and it is tough, but... I believe on fight night, no man will take my backhand and I believe I'll smash them all. How's Johnny Fisher been taking the backhand? Uh, more importantly, how have you been taking his? Because he's a heavyweight. Yeah, no, nah, of course, sparring's just, um, you're in there learning, so there's no like heavy wars and that, no big shots flying. But um, yeah, we're just in there working on things, you know, like it's not, we're not in there trying to take each other's head off, but we're both learning and uh, that's how it will stay. You know? Who's got the best banter in the gym? Oh, I don't know. Let me... I don't know, everyone's got their own like personality, I think. But John Edges is quite cheeky and he? he loves a joke and that and uh but I suppose Ebony and L they're good laugh, but yeah, they're all they've all got their own personalities really, so I think John's the most cheeky so he must have the best band, I reckon. Who gets in control of the music? Who who decides what goes on? Ah, oh, there's not been one session at the gym, yeah, where Johnny Fisher and Addy's not he's eighties or night whatever it is on. He loves his old old music, doesn't he? But um yeah, when Harvey Horn was in the gym, he was all, he put good music on that. But I'm just I'm just warming to it. Give me a couple more months, the next thing you know, I'll start singing along to the '90s music. But right now, I'm still I'm still warming to his music. I'm still warming to it. You probably weren't even born when some of uh, Johnny Fisher's favourites came out. Nah, he loves it. He knows them all as well. Like, I don't know I don't know how he does it, but um, yeah, I don't I ain't got a clue half it. But I've got to love a classic, ain't you? You got to love a classic music. And do you commute to the gym or are you staying in London or Raynham or Essex or whatever? No, nah, I drive down there. It's like, it's like an hour and a half. But I suppose if you want to be the best, you've got to do make these commitments. But um, when I get on a six and eight round, it's hopefully I'll um, get a good few sponsors. I'll look to stay down there. But as of now, I'm just travelling to and from. But uh, if anyone wants to pay for my accommodation, <laughs> I'll happily <laughs> move down out. there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But um, as of now, I'm just driving there, just driving. And um, Ebony Bridges, not long ago, won the world title. She defends it in December. What's that done for the gym and the atmosphere to now have a reigning world champion in the facility? Yeah, it's awesome, really. Like everyone's buzzing for everyone. Like even when they just win the fight. Like if Saturday, I'm um, John Edges and Johnny Fisher are boxing. I'm sure they're going to be. They'll win and become victorious. Everyone will be buzzing. Like Ebony's got a world title. She's training hard, and uh, if anything, she trains a bit too hard at times. <laughs> I think, but. Yeah, everyone's just um, everyone's like close knit in our in our gym, really, like the origin. So it's all it's good, really. It's good. It's quality.
What made you pick Mark Tibbs in the first place and what's impressed you about him since you've worked together more closely? You know, what I like about Mark is um, me and him gel very well and how he explains things, you know, like he's all crash bang wallop, like he's proper, um, he, how he explains things, you know, like I can, uh, it makes sense in my mind. So when I'm sparring and he says, oh, adjust this, do that, it does make sense. I go out there and do it and you think, oh, he's right. Like the 1%, he really does, um, he gets through to you and I think that's a very important thing as a coach and a fighter that you have that sort of um, relationship. Now, in theory, you must still be growing, although that seems completely ridiculous. Um, how do you go about deciding where you're going to sit when it comes to championships and stuff? Because we don't know how big you're going to be in two years' time. Well, in the amateurs, I've done light heavy. And um, obviously, there's a long layoff because of COVID and that. I got, I got taller and, and wider, but I'm still growing, definitely. But I think for now, cruiserweight is my um, weight division. and I want to be the future of the cruiserweight division. But I'm sure I'm six foot seven. I'm only 20 years old. In, in years to come, I'll fill out. I'll have to... I guess I could, I'll end up being a heavyweight, who knows yet, but for now I want to take over the cruiserweight division, you know. Who are your kind of boxing heroes, who did you like growing up? Well, a lot of people ask me that, to be honest, I like watching all boxing, you know, like, I'll watch all fighters, whether that's like Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, even the amateurs, you know, I do, I respect Ben Whitaker. I think he's a good fighter, I love his style, I watch him a lot, and, um, but yeah, all, all fighters really, I like watching all boxing. Who do you think, before you, has got the best backhand in the history of the sport? You're thinking of people like Klitschko, Tommy Hearns, uh, Lewis, who do, you, who do you like? I don't know really, I think there's been a lot of big punches out there, isn't there? Like there's loads, like obviously Tommy Hearns, he's devastating, but I think it's all about if you can land it though. If you got, you can have a really good backhand, but if you can't get that backhand off, then it's worthless, isn't it, I suppose? But um, yeah, there's a lot of good punches out there, but it's whether you can land it, I think. Is that something you've been working on with Mark, kind of creating those openings, setting those traps? Definitely, but um, yeah, I don't want to be known as just like a big puncher, like one one trick pony. I can box, you know. Like, I'll get in there. I can I can get behind the jab and look smart and look slick. Like, it ain't just all about knocking everyone out because I think a lot of fighters that are known for being big punchers, they get stuck in this mindset of like, if they don't knock them out or get the stoppage, and it's like it's almost like they've lost. Like, if they get a win, but they've only won on points, like. Whereas it point scorers that get in there, it don't matter if they knock them out, stop them, or, or however they win. A win's a win, you know. When you, when you look back at your career and years to come, if you won, that's the main thing, you know, no matter how you do it. But if you knock them out and knock them over, then that's a bonus. But every contest I get in there, I prepare to knock them out. But if I don't, then I'm not going to cry about it, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not are you hoping that the next opponent or the one after that gives you those rounds because you've knocked the first two out, you are obviously carrying power, but w would you like to go further on in the fight just to show everyone what you've got? Yeah, of course, you like, but at the end of the day you don't get paid for overtime, but I suppose um, it'll be good experience for me to get through the rounds, but I prepare each contest to put my opponents over, you know, like it's business and um, I can't feel sorry for no one, you know, I'll get in there to hurt, hurt someone and put them out, so that's how it is for me really. What's kind of the end goal for you? Obviously, you want to win a world title, but how do you see yourself? You know, do you want to transcend the sport, like a, I guess Mayweather in recent times, De La Hoya, people like that, or are you going to be kind of a quiet man champion, just make your money and get out? What, what's your f vision of the future? Well, really, I don't, I don't really know as of yet. Like, but I want to keep winning and keep putting people over and uh, get some titles under my belt and get some good 50-50 fights, get some money and. Um, yeah, who knows where he can end up. Look at Tony Bellew, he's now pr yeah. being a presenter. He's a good talker, don't get me wrong, he's very good at speaking, but who knows what the future holds. But as of now, I'm training like an athlete, training like a professional fighter, and I'm a machine, so that's, that's how it's going to be for a long time. Brilliant, Tommy, really appreciate it, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs>